Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Island leaders hope for a speedy recovery as the lieutenant governor is off island for medical care. Also tonight, one says it's political intimidation, while the other says it's a political tactic. And high cost of living in the NMI calls for more financial assistance. In sports, a young basketballer with big dreams. Stay with us, we have these stories and more next here on the Channel 2 News. I have a phone. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on phone. I have a tablet. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on tab. I have a TV. I have a stick. Ooh, TV on stick. I want my streaming, I want my TV. Ooh, streaming TV. Before you go for a drive, be sure to put on your seatbelt. This includes all your passengers. Buckle up CNMI. It's the law. Remember, click it or tick it. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. If you're going for a ride, buckle up, buckle up. From the oldest to the youngest, buckle up. Sipping on a delicious drink from McDonald's may have you thinking, what makes these drinks just hit different? <laughs> Don't overthink it. Just enjoy it. It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Cool off this summer with McDonald's Minute Maid Slushies. Try the new Tropical Mango or returning favorite, Strawberry Watermelon, for a limited time. ba da ba ba, -ba. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, June 3, 2022. The CNMI Lieutenant Governor was medically evacuated to Hawaii for advanced care after an incident at the Susupi Courthouse. Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios and Second Lady Wella Palacios departed Saipan this morning at 5 a.m. by military medevac. According to Hospital Chief Esther Munia, the Lieutenant Governor will be receiving medical care in Honolulu, Hawaii. Thanks, Governor, for, for your support also and your, um, you know, really helping us to try to get uh, our Lieutenant Governor uh, transferred to a higher level of care that is not available 
in Guam um, and of course here in the CNMI. So that's the reason why uh, the closest point would be um, Hawaii's. Palacios was admitted into CHCC on Tuesday after losing stability during a court testimony due to a back condition. The Palacios family, independent party and the office of the governor are hoping for a speedy recovery. Lawmakers look into allegations of political intimidation among government employees in the CNMI. The governor addresses the issue as well. Governor Ralph Torres says the concerns raised by lawmakers regarding termination letters to certain government employees with familial ties are accusations, which he is not surprised to hear. There's no, uh, no surprise that they will come up again with all these accusations. Um, I challenge anyone to go ahead and uh, see if the government has violated any of the contract. Uh, because to my understanding, um, all those again that they claim has been terminated for political reason um, is definitely false. According to the Office of Personal Management, there are about 2,200 central government employees. More than 800 are contractual-based employees and 1,300 are civil service employees. Factors that may call for termination include work performance, criminal behavior, insubordination, sexual harassment, and end of contract. The issue was brought up by Representatives Joel Camacho and Selena Babauta, who say family members are asking for their help after receiving pink slips out of political retaliation. Lawmakers say they will not tolerate political intimidation among government employees. I want to make uh, the public um, understand and know that I'm going to be uh, really looking into this issue uh, I will be bringing it up to the Attorney General's office and please reach out to my office and Rep. Celine Mbavalta's office. Uh, if, if you feel political intimidation or any of that sort. Camacho quit the Republican Party last year and is now running for re-election under the Arnold Dave campaign. Democrat Selena Babauta says she saw this coming. And just as I predicted, uh several weeks ago that termination letters will begin to be issued after the impeachment hearing at the Senate. As we all know that um, Senate hearing has concluded and immediately upon conclusion of that hearing, uh, the notices for termination have been issued as of that date. I know of at least six people who have received their letters already. Reps Camacho and Babauta say they will be looking into the matter. In light of Pride Month, the governor says to spread positivity. We're here Pride Month. We're here to spread the love, spread positive vibes. Uh, and so I think they should start doing that and start uh, giving out accurate information rather than just information uh, out of nowhere and nothing to substantiate their claims. Three Saipan residents are asking the court to look once more into the Senate impeachment rules, which they say are in violation of the Open Government Act. Senator Paul Manglonia, along with Saipan residents Patricia Guerrero and Bruce Jorgensen, are suing six Republican senators over alleged constitutional violations made in the impeachment proceedings. Uh, this case is very important for the people. Um, because of the Open Government Act violations, and we want to settle that and also uh, resolve that. And because of uh, fair and um, equal representation of the people. It's all about the people. The initial filing requested the court to grant a TRO on the recent impeachment trial. Now that the trial is over, Judge Pro Tem Albert Tolentino orders the plaintiffs to file an amended complaint by June 7. The, the amended complaint will focus on uh, remedial uh, avenues that uh, are now available to us, such as uh, returning to the status quo and uh, having, having the, uh, the Senate address once again the issue of the Senate rules that we believe were passed in violation of the Open Government Act request or the Open Government Act and uh, and the procedures that were involved. So 
we're going to revisit that. We will modify the, the uh, relief that we're requesting so that we can tailor them to the current circumstances. The senators are represented by attorney Colin Thompson and have been ordered to file their response pleading by June 17. We're very happy today that, you know, we hear from Judge Tolentino that he wants to move this forward uh, expeditiously, and which is what the public expects. You know, our, our main concern is other than the issue of the Open Government Act violation, which we all know um, uh, is the reason to expedite this. Uh, we're concerned about the fact that in an impeachment trial, there's no prosecution, there's no evidence. And so that's the other you know, issues that we're bringing up. So uh, we're doing this because the people out there, they're, they're, they're calling us, they're meeting us everywhere, they're telling us we need to resolve this issue. And so we're grateful that Tolent Judge Tolentino uh, appreciates that. The CNMI Senate acquitted Governor Ralph Torres from six articles of impeachment filed against him on May 18. Torres was represented by attorneys Anthony Uggin and Gil Burnbridge. The trial proceeded with no prosecutor or evidence due to non-compliance of the Senate rules. The three taxpayers, along with the House majority, have been fighting the issue of an alleged mistrial. CNMI residents are in trying times due to inflation. Gas prices are now at its highest in CNMI history. The 20 cent increase now makes one gallon of regular gas $6.41 on Saipan, $7.74 on Rhoda, and $8.14 on Tinian. Governor Torres and Finance Secretary David Atalik has announced the rollout of a second round $500 local stimulus program that will help ease the high cost of living. The gas price increase affects electricity costs as well, and the governor says they are working towards a program that will assist households. We are uh, discussing uh, with Secretary Dave, uh, and I've spoken to um, Executive Director CUC Gary Camacho, uh, also on um, looking at CUC billing, because it does affect, and it's not just the price of gas, for a vehicle, but ultimately also at home. So um, we are looking into how we can assist um, on that route. Senator Edith DeLon Guerrero has authored a resolution asking the governor to provide a gas voucher to all CNMI residents. The governor has expressed in the past that he may not lean into that avenue. If there's any gas related fuel related it will be going to cuc so that everyone across the cnmi uh, can benefit uh, and receive that kind of assistance currently cuc's fuel adjustment charge is now 36 cents per kilowatt that is expected to increase in the next few days the Department of Finance urges all residents to contact their call center for any further inquiries on tax returns, the upcoming stimulus, or other matters. In a press conference this morning, Finance Secretary David Atalik states the Division of Revenue and Taxation has already processed more than 21,000 tax returns, and they continue to process more each day. To learn more about your status on the tax returns, you may contact Contact their call center at 670-664-1040. All residents with or without income are urged as well to submit their 2021 tax return forms in order to receive the second stimulus. You can download the form online at www.finance.gov.mp or you can pick up a form at their office in Dandan. The forms do have a print charge. The CNMI has seen a huge drop in positive COVID-19 cases, but that doesn't mean that they're completely gone. The CNMI remains under a public health emergency state, which means an extension for free medical care. The presumptive eligibility for Medicaid will be extended until October of this year. Hospital Chief Esther Munoz says the federal health care program was set to expire this July. The CNMI is supposed to be notified two months prior the lifting of a public health emergency. And since there was no notice, the program will be extended for another 90 days. 
So, um, so that means July, um, July, August, September, October. So um, that will be, it will be extended for another 90 days. Presumptive eligibility or PE offers those who don't qualify for Medicaid a chance to enroll in the program and avail of the services. The program was implemented during the pandemic to assist all those infected with COVID. Munya says although the cases of positive COVID-19 are low, community members are still encouraged to follow protocols. The CHCC is also collaborating with the Pacific Mini Games Council as thousands of visitors are expected to arrive in the cinema in just two weeks. Um, we did uh, prepare a, a pamphlet for the mini games. Uh, the team has been working really hard, and thanks to CEO Babauta also for helping, you know, working with us with their team to be able to ensure that we do surveillance, active surveillance for all incoming uh, visitors, including the ones that are uh, coming for the games. And so there is a, um, a pamphlet for that for the uh, for them to take a look at and ensure that they follow the protocols that we are instilling. All right, coming up, Inter Island Travel welcomes a new airline. Stay tuned. I have a TV. I have a stick. Ooh. TV on stick. With the Amazon Fire Stick, enjoy live TV and all your streaming apps, all from your home Wi-Fi. Subscribe to DTV Plus for only $35 a month with your link bundle. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on stick. Northern Marianas, rise up to the challenge. June 17th through June 25th, the Northern Marianas will be hosting the NM Pacific Mini Games 2022. Athletics, badminton, baseball, beach volleyball, golf, tennis, triathlon, ba and weightlifting. Visit northernmarianas2022.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks to the Tensu Lin Foundation, Joe Tendada Foundation, T Galleria, Docomo Pacific, ITE, NMC, Elan Group, Marpack, Fish Guy Scuba Charter, Atkins Crawl, Glorified City Limit, McDonald's, Mobile, Triple J, NM Tech, and Bank of Guam. All workers have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. Workers, you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 or 3155. Half a day, Sinamai. Did you know that car crashes are the leading cause of death for children ages 1 to 13? In order to keep your children safe during a car crash, make sure you select the right type of car seat for their age and size. A rear-facing car seat should be used from birth to 12 months or up to 3 years old. Forward-facing car seats are for children from 1 to 3 or up to 7 years old. Booster seats are for children from 4 to 7 or up to 12 years old. Seat belts are for children 8 to 12 years old or older. For a seat belt to fit properly, the lap belt must lie snugly across the upper thighs, not the stomach. The shoulder belt should lie snugly across the shoulder and chest and not across the neck or face. Do not move your child to the next car seat level until he or she reaches the top height and weight limit 
allowed by your car seats manufacturer. Remember, your children are the most precious cargo when driving. Keep us safe and buckle us in. We depend on you. Thank you. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Inter Island travel in the CNMI ups its competition with a new airline in town. It's called the Mariana Southern Airways, the newest airline in the CNMI. It's a joint venture between Saipan's MP Enterprises and America's largest commuter airline, Southern Airways Express. President Keith Stewart expects the Mariana Southern Airways to fly the skies this July. According to Stewart, the airline will include 90 weekly flights serving Saipan, Tinian, Rota, and Guam. Mariana Southern Airways will also offer same-day connectivity to Saipan for travel travelers on the Honolulu-Guam flight. This effort is to avoid an overnight stay in Guam. The airlines has commenced local employment opportunities to residents in the CNMI and Guam. The schedule, website, and open ticket sales will be announced in the next two weeks. The community is invited to a Saipan Safety and Health Fair set for next week, Monday. United Airlines, together with the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation, will be holding a Saipan Safety and Health Fair on Monday, June 6. The fair will be at the Saipan International Airport from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. There will be free flu shots, blood pressure and sugar checkups, mental health program insights, health talks, Zumba, and a fire truck display. The first 100 guests will receive a free tote bag. The event is family friendly and open to all residents. All right, folks, don't go anywhere because we have sports up next. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh. Oh. Streaming TV. Switch between live TV and your favorite streaming apps with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch your shows and multiple devices all at the same time, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, or savings for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus. Your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh. Streaming TV. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle.
on phone. I have a tablet. I have no TV. Ooh. TV on tab. I have a TV. I have a stick. Ooh. TV on stick. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh. Streaming TV. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. And for the KSPN Sports Report, tonight we meet a 10-year-old hoopster who dreams big in the world of basketball. Basketball isn't just a sport. It is an art, one that must be mastered to succeed. A quote by Stephen Curry. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. A basketball superstar in the making is our young star for tonight. I'm Andre Derek Tenorio. I'm 10 years old and I school at Coblerville Elementary School. Tenorio started playing basketball at a very young age. He also plays soccer and he used to play for Matanza, but now he is more focused in playing basketball. When I was one years old, but when I started training with my dad, I was five years old. Tenorio is a big fan of Stephen Curry of the Golden State Warriors, but he also idolizes a local basketball player, Adrian Kostru Suba. I used to play soccer for uh, Matanza CTSI, but I didn't have enough time to play two sports, so I just stick with basketball. His biggest achievement so far is when he was promoted to the 6th grade and of course when they won the basketball championship representing Coplerville Elementary School. Winning the championship and promoting the 6th grade. Winning the championship to carry uh, Coplerville Elementary School. Tenorio dreams big and one of them is to be a professional basketball player someday. My dreams of basketball is to make it as a pro basketball player like in the NBA or if I don't make it to the NBA at least play in the PBA the Philippines basketball and here is his advice to those young kids out there just to balance your studies and train hard and to and to keep your head up and never and never give up and to be respectful and be humble. Yes, yes! Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Golfers come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the 
views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online, open seven days a week. Best night out at Godfather's Bar in Garabin. Sing along to your favorite hits with live music from the Gigolos. Godfather's has daily food and drink specials like Taco Tuesdays. The best pizza on island every day of the week. Located on Palm Street in Garrison. Everybody is family at Godfather's Bar. Bada bing, bada boom. And for the KSPN weather report, partly sunny with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East wind around 8 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East southeast wind 5 to 8 miles per hour. High 87, low 79. East 74% humidity. Tomorrow, partly sunny with scattered showers and thunderstorms. East wind 6 to 9 miles per hour. High 89, low 79. The marine forecast general trade winds will continue through the middle of next week. Combined seas near 3 feet may increase by a foot early next week. East wind 5 to 10 knots, wind waves 2 feet or less, light 12. Sunrise will be at 5.45 a.m., high tide at 11.51 p.m., low tide 4.21 p.m., and the sunset will be at 6.44 p.m. All right, folks, that is your new sports and weather here in the Marianas. We thank you so much for watching the Channel 2 News. We hope you have a good night and a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Thank <laughs> you.